when you play the Game of Thrones, you subscribe and like. Or you die. There is no middle ground. All right, hello guys. Welcome back to the Grease Comedy YouTube channel. Today's video, we're going to be doing our top 100 Song of Ice and Fire characters. And in this one, we're going to be talking about Nettles. She is number 92. I really didn't know where to place this character when I was originally trying to slot the character in on this list because the character is really interesting. One of the most unique characters of Fire and Blood, of course, but the character isn't in the story for that long and doesn't have a lot of actual, like, lore or information about the character, right? So, like, of all the characters I've done so far on this list, a lot of them have had a lot more interaction with the character to where they make a longer video. This video, I, I think, is probably going to be 20 minutes, maybe maybe shorter. So, yeah, that's the problem with Nettles, is that what we do get of the character is really great. There just isn't a lot about the character. And I think that's one thing that, as a book reader, I'm a little disappointed with that they didn't do in House of the Dragon, because Nettles is such a great character. And because of what we got in Season 1, right, where they were able to delve into all these characters from the book and go even you know further into them, you know, like characters like Allison, like, you know, Aemon, all these characters, Nettles would have been a perfect character for them to do kind of in season two. And I, I want to give a description of the character because she's just so different from all of the main characters that we kind of look at. But let's start with kind of a general description of the character. Nettles was a small, skinny, brown-skinned girl with black hair and brown eyes. She had crooked teeth and a scarred nose. According to Archmaester Gilladin, she could not be called pretty. Nettles was foul-mouthed, filthy, and fearless. Those are the kind of the script, that's kind of the description of Nettles right away. She's someone that instantly kind of draws your attention, right? Because all of these characters, especially around the dance, you know, outside of like the Dragon Seed stuff, are all, you know, Targaryens or, you know, Valarions or Hightowers, people that grew up in way different circumstances. And here's a character like Nettles, who finds her way as being a dragon rider and gains a lot of, you know, influence uh, as she becomes a dragon rider. Not many people can do that in the world, just in general. Before we start and get deeper into the character, if you do want to become a Patreon, remember you do get videos early and you do get an exclusive video each week. Thank you to those people that do support me on those. And let's get into the character of Nettles. So according to Mushroom's testimony, and again, there's not a lot to go off of based off of her birth, uh, but this is kind of the one we have to go off of. Nettles was a bastard of uncertain birth born to a dockside whore. She grew up homeless in Spice Town and whole on the island of Driftmark. According to Septon Hustis's history, Nettles also, her nose was slit after she was caught thieving. So this character really reminds me a lot of Arya in a lot of ways, because if you think about Arya's last chapter in A Game of Thrones, it's also her having to kind of just survive by any means necessary. Arya, you know, even thinks about stealing and all these different things. And Nettles is a character that grows up straight up homeless, apparently, right? She's someone that does not have a home. She doesn't have luxury of food, right? She has to either steal those things or somehow get those, somehow find a way to survive. And so they kind of tried to combine this character with, I think, like Alan, for instance, and Reyna in House of the Dragon season two. Like they took parts of this character and gave it to those. And I don't think it necessarily worked the best, especially in Reyna's case. But Nettles is just somebody that is a completely unique POV. Close as we kind of get to this in A Song of Ice and Fire in the main series would either be like a person like maybe Pate or Davos. Those would be the closest to like kind of two nettles that I that I would think of in terms of like their starting situation. I think personality wise, she's much more like Arya. But that's kind of all we know. That's all we know about the character of Nettles before the dance. And so there's a lot to be explored there. But she is somebody that could have been similar to, like, for instance, Dunk, right? Who grows up at Flea Bottom and, you know, King's Landing. That's pretty much a very, that's a very similar idea of kind of what Nettles could have been going through. And it could have shown why she was so clever as well, being able to actually tame Sheep Stealer. Because she went with a much more indirect approach, right? She got the dragon accustomed to her and kind of even needing her for food. She already had the kind of relationship with the dragon. Instead of, you know, like some of these other people just trying to go straight up to the dragon and trying to claim it like brute force ways, that wasn't the way Nettles does it. And so it kind of stands out the way that she does it. But that is going to get us to the dance. So during the Dance of the Dragons... Prince Shaharis Velaryon sends out this, you know, proclamation that they need more dragon riders. And so they start looking for people that can ride these dragons. 
happens somewhat similar to the show. You know, the de the details are a little different, but more or less that's what happens. And so Nettles being somebody that, you know, growing up right on Driftmark, on the island of Driftmark, she is somebody that would have seen dragons regularly. It wouldn't have been like a huge shock to see a dragon, right? And she's somebody also that would have grown up in proximity to the Vlarions and, you know, Rhaenyra and the Blacks, very, very close just in general. And so she would try to claim a dragon. And at 16 years old, she would try and tame a wild dragon, something unheard of. They were more, you know, integrated with, with humans, right? And, and being in King's Landing and all those things. This is not the case of Sheep Stealer. And so what ends up happening is Nettles brings a sheep that was already slaughtered and would bring it to Sheep Stealer until eventually the dragon became accustomed to her and let Nettles ride Sheep Stealer. And so she then was brought into Rhaenyra's court because of her, you know, claiming a dragon. I think of all the people, she would have been the one viewed the most uniquely, or I guess, you know, in a bad sense, weirdly. Uh, if you think about the way Jace in the show reacts to, you know, Ulf and Hugh, it would have almost been even worse because Nettles is somebody that looks so different than everybody else. I think she could have experienced uh, a lot more of that discrimination uh, based upon the way she looks, right? Like, think about the description I, I laid out for that, right? She's a character that, you know, grows up homeless. She's not of, you know, great nobility and birth. And we don't even know if Nettles even had any Targaryen blood at all. Right. Whereas like in the show, they kind of gave some paths for like Hugh and Ulf that can maybe say, OK, where their parentage came from. And you can look at like Adam Valarion. OK, he's a bastard, it seems, of like Corliss or they say Lainor. He has some connection to the family. Nettles has none. She's just some you know homeless girl that has the cleverness to tame a dragon. You could see why that would be a bit scary to the Targaryens in general. That trip just means anybody could tame a dragon with the right tools to do so. And that's why I think Nettles is so interesting. But not only that, Nettles goes into fighting for the Targaryens and even is present at the Battle of the Gullet. But she has a much different reaction to the ending of the Battle of the Gullet than a lot of other people do. Because there's a lot of things that happen during the Battle of the Gullet. One part of it is that Jace actually ends up dying. But on the other part of it, there was a destruction of Spice Town and the butchering of its people. And like we talked about, it seems like Nettles grew up in Spice Town. She would have been deeply impacted by it. She would have known people personally. And so where you have so many of these other people that don't seem to care about, you know, the common people, Nettles would have been that person. She would have been, you know, if she hadn't claimed a dragon, she could have been killed, right? And so you have all these things that make Nettles so interesting because she's the most human character that that we have at this point right and so she seems to be very distraught about the end of the battle of the gullet right losing jace you know losing the people of spice town and the horrors that she would have witnessed in this battle uh, with her dragon the burning of people you know burning people alive right nettles saw a lot of horrors and atrocities either way nettles would accompany rhaenyra when she took king's landing during the fall of king's landing but she wouldn't stay there long she was tasked to go on a mission with daemon targaryen to go take down aemon which made a lot of sense right you don't want to just do one dragon goes and tries to challenge vagar you know the, the greatest dragon at this time you're going to want at least two three dragons i would have even said you know maybe three dragons would have been you know beneficial to try and track down aemon but once again, she is chosen to kind of be the outcast almost. Because in a lot of ways, it's hard to read in what Rhaenyra's, you know, decision was, or was it Damon that chose Nettles? It's unclear, but why would she have been chosen? Now, there's a couple reasons. One is that maybe Rhaenyra didn't want Nettles close to her, right? Because of the implications of, you know, Nettles claiming a dragon and the way she looked would have made I maybe had questions. You think about the Westerosi people when people from Essos come over and you think then compare that to Nettles' description and the way she, she looks. Rhaenyra could have been doing it just out of, oh, I want to get this girl away, send her with Daemon, and, and hopefully they'll bring down Vagar. And also, you're sending Nettles, in my opinion, to by far the most dangerous mission, right? You're sending Nettles, who's very untested, gone through the Battle of the Gullet, sure, to go to attack Vagar. Like, it, obviously, it, it feels like Nettles is kind of being sent to be slaughtered, right? Like, yes, it is likely that her and Damon would take down Aemond, but at the same time, like, 
it also is very likely that she could get killed in this, but also be enough for Damon to overcome uh, Aemond because of her help. So I think there's a lot more in there that it's hard to understand because it also could have been Damon was asking for nettles, maybe because he was attracted to her or whatever, because there is the rumor that happens that she and Damon were sleeping together, or was it a father daughter situation? Either way, they could have been also Damon was already having some sort of relationship, whether fatherly or as partners before this decision was made. Nettles would have, you know, been around Damon for a little while at this point. So what actually ends up occurring there? And so there's a lot that we don't know about the decision and the rationale as to why Rhaenyra sent Nettles with Damon. But let's move on. So Damon and Nettles, they would basically be staying at Maidenpool, where they would get up every day looking for Aemon. They didn't find him, but they would spend a lot of time together. And so this sparked a lot of rumors. Mazaria seems to pick up on that the two are having some sort of relationship, while it seems like other rumors were it was just kind of father-daughter type situ situation. And so when you have this situation that's kind of replaying itself, right? Because the rumors were, at least in Fire and Blood, was was Rhaenyra and Damon was that more like a uncle to to niece relationship or was that a you know more was it a sexual relationship and so you have that play out again and so that's why I think it's so personal to Rhaenyra because Rhaenyra can see herself in that and so Rhaenyra acts upon it but to me I always have liked the idea that it's the father daughter option and to really show that Rhaenyra's paranoia is getting the best of her as people around her all turning their backs on her you know Ulf and Hugh they change sides huge blow to her cause I I really like the idea that it's really Rhaenyra makes a mistake and either way it's a mistake either way it's a mistake to try and you know separate Damon and Nettles and all that stuff when they are again core of her support Maybe it's also she thinks that Damon and Nettles are going to look to surplant, you know, her. There's a lot of things that could have been going on in Rhaenyra's mind, but I personally love the father-daughter one more than the sexual um, relationship. But either way, during this time, Rhaenyra would send a message to Lord Mouton asking for Nettles to be killed and for Damon to be sent back to King's Landing. And if you're Lord Mouton, of course, you're not going to do that. Uh, that just makes no sense. You're just asking for yourself to be killed. Um, but what he does is he tells Damon, and Damon then, you know, has her leave and go elsewhere while he goes to take on Aemond. Now, another thing that's kind of thrown in there, because it's always the thing that's thrown in there about women, and Rhaenyra comes to the conclusion that Nettles was somehow using spells to get sheep stealer and also to sway Damon's allegiance as well. But again, but this is definitely just an ego, right? It's the ego of, oh, the Targaryens maybe are not as high up as they think, right? The people view the Targaryens as more than normal humans. If somebody like Nettles can, can claim a dragon and also then be sleeping with Daemon, is that truly the answer now, right? Like, are the Targaryens really above people? Is there, or is it really that Targaryens are the only ones with the access to the dragons and that's why? So that question starts to be asked, right? And that's something that we see going forward is like, the Targaryen name loses a bit of its, you know, power as the years go on, and a lot of it is kind of because of the dance in a lot of ways. According to Norrin, no word of farewell was spoken between Damon and Nettles, but as Sheepstealer fled away, Craxes let out a scream that shattered all the windows of Jonquil's tower. It seems like a very disheartening departure. Because you look at the two, you know, they would have grown, you know, closer. Whether it was whatever relationship it was, whatever you believe, the two obviously had gotten very close. And Sheep Stealer and Caraxes would have been, you know, together a lot of the time. And so it would have been a departing that wouldn't have been so great. Especially if you think about the emotions of both riders and their dragons, right? That's something that House of the Dragon has kind of presented. If that is the case, you could definitely understand why that reaction would have came. But... We know what occurs with Damon's plotline, right? He goes to Harrenhal, him and Aemon duke it out, and Damon and Aemon eventually kill each other, more or less, and all of that. But this story isn't about Damon. So we have to then follow Nettles, because this is not the end, really, of her story. Now, we'll never know confirmed sources or really know exactly Nettles' story after the dance, is that after Rhaenyra's death, there were reports that Sheepstealer had been seen at Crack Crackclaw Point and the Mountains of the Moon. 
and then even only a few years later in 134 AC during the reign of King Aegon III Targaryen, Sir Robert Rowan led a royal army to the Vale of Arryn to support Sir Joffrey Arryn. Robert's men encountered sheep stealer and a ragged nettles in a cave. And in the ensuing fight, 16 men were slain and three score more were wounded. Nettles and her dragon were last seen flying deeper into the mountains of the moon. And so Nettles seems to pretty much go into exile. And you can understand why. One, the dragons are all but extinct at this point. So anyone seeing a dragon is going to have a lot of attention come to her. And so she can't really go to like, you know, just some random city in Esso. She can't go to anywhere in Westeros where people are going to be at that are going to have quick access to telling the throne about it. Right. Because it's going to be a huge deal. Right. And Nettles herself isn't going to be viewed the best either. She's still suspected of, you know, helping Damon do treason or whatever the, or the public outlook would have looked at with her. People also wouldn't have liked her because she just looks different than everybody else. And she has a dragon. People would have gone jealousy. People would have been jealous and all these things of stuff that Rainier goes through with paranoia. It's the way Visenya is, is looked at, for instance. It's a lot of the times because they're jealous. And I think a lot of people would be jealous of Nettles and the way that she was able to, you know, survive and get to a decent point of her life, which kind of came falling down as quickly as she got up there. But this is really where the sightings of Nettles end. We can do speculations, theories, but one of those theories is that she was a fire witch. The Vale Mountain clans tell stories of this fire witch who once lived in a hidden valley within the mountains. An offshoot clan of the painted dogs, one of the most savage of the mountain clans, worshipped her. Their boys would prove their courage by bringing her gifts and were only considered men after they had faced the flames of the dragon and returned with burns. Now, who does that sound like, right? Because we do know that even later on that the burned men do almost the exact same thing, but a little differently. Because there's no dragon to go to, they would have their use be given some part of their body to the fire to prove that they had the courage to be a man. This, this seems to happen right after Nettles goes off the history books. It seems likely that Nettles became somewhat of a religious figure among these mountain clans, and whether she was, you know, the leader of them, or had a part... Or had a place among them, or was just living in her own solitude, and people would come to her to do this with the dragon, who knows? But then the other part that's even more interesting is when did Sheep Stealer actually die? Because Sheep Stealer was not the oldest dragon when the dance was going on. Sheep Stealer would have been around 100 years old, probably, uh, based upon the idea that Sheep Stealer seems to be born uh, in J. Harris's early reign. But we don't know. And we even know the dragons live much longer than 100 years anyway. Well, not maybe much longer, but they still live significantly more time after 100 years. So when did Sheep Stealer truly die? And Sheep Stealer likely was like the last dragon, possibly, of the dance to survive for how long? We don't know. It seems like it would have had to have happened, you know, within that span of time between the main story and the dance but a very unclear. How did Nettles die? Will we ever get clarification on Nettles' eventual end and what became more of her life in this cave and or solitude? That's up for George to decide. Maybe we'll find out more information in Fire and Blood Part 2. Maybe there'll be another sighting of Nettles or Sheep Stealer. Be very interesting. Something I didn't even, you know, point out that maybe during this, you know, attack that ended up happening with uh, Sir Robert Sir Robert Rowan Possibly Sheep Stealer could have been injured. That's possible. Now, I, I wouldn't take a huge... I wouldn't take it hugely, though, because we do know that the rumors start that this story of, you know, her being a fire witch, she would have had to have had a dragon for that to occur, but could have been possible. Maybe a lingering injury Sheep Stealer sustains that wasn't fatal, but it was something to, you know, eventually would have slowed the dragon down to then it would have died. Who knows? But let me know what you guys think about Nettles, and I'll see you guys all in the next one. Bye, guys.